He is Richmond's most famous unknown citizen. At intersections across the city, on walls, street poles, and signs. Shrieking Violet is definitely not what he was. Tributes stand to a giant in Richmond lore, a roaring lion you may never have heard of. He is one of the most recognized names in Virginia and faces, but no one knows his story at all. A monumental figure who wielded power in black and white. As far as I'm concerned, he went all the way to the top. John Mitchell Jr. was born into slavery in Henrico in 1863. His legacy is still felt throughout the Commonwealth, but no one knows who he is. Historian Sly Tucker says following the Civil War, an educated Mitchell moved up the rungs of society during Reconstruction, and he urged other African Americans to follow. And that's all he wanted to do. He was just trying to say, hey, we're not better, but we are all on equal terms. Mitchell owned a bank, bought real estate, and served on city council. And in 1921, he became the first black man in Virginia to run for governor. I promise you, every day I'm learning something new about John Mitchell Jr. In 1883, Mitchell took the reins of the Richmond Planet, one of the nation's oldest black-owned newspapers. He was 21. The cool thing about the Richmond Planet, it had pretty big type, but it had really big illustrations too. So if you couldn't read, you could get the gist of what was going on through the illustrations. He wasn't looking to be a martyr, but he certainly wasn't concerned. He recognized he was part of something bigger. Researcher Scott Crooker says at the helm of the planet, the man known as the fighting editor left his mark in a most unorthodox way. And he was one of the first who actually ran a full column on the front page at times of all of the lynchings that were happening throughout the country. In nearly every edition, Mitchell would splash images and print lists of people slaughtered by vigilantes. He was frequently given death threats. There were times where he was sent ropes, nooses, and things like that. Front page, bold type, unjustified lynching. We are going to get to the, we're going to get to the bottom of all this. Mitchell's anti-lynching crusade and blistering editorials gained him notoriety. They were so provocative that they made the Richmond Times Dispatch go, okay, well maybe we have to save something more. The civil rights champion never wavered, often riding armed and alone to rural Virginia, reporting on murderous mobs. I question if I would have had the courage that he had. Mitchell's story reads like fiction. The Richmond Planet first came off the presses when Reconstruction was ending, but Jim Crow was beginning. But his very real tale is documented in a new film, Birth of a Planet. That all of a sudden, um, you realize that sometimes there's a hidden gem and it's sitting right in front of you. Tilt Production and Creative's CEO Ron Carey hopes Mitchell's exploits will inspire a new generation of Richmonders. I don't know what, what thing he drew on that allowed him to say, I'm gonna get up every day right, and then go and dedicate a part of my life to trying to make other people's lives better. He had that hubris. He did. He wanted to lead the pack, but he did not want to do it alone. One person elated that this mythical figure is attracting attention, Mitchell's namesake. John Mitchell Jr., he's doing more than smiling at this right now. He's saying it's about time. The modern day John Mitchell says his uncle still motivates. We are all carrying on his spirit. I am definitely trying to carry on his spirit. The great-great-nephew can walk in his ancestors' footsteps. Mitchell's ornate home still stands at the corner of 3rd and Jackson. When I see this house, I don't think about the newspaper. I don't think about the bank. I don't think about all of the other things that he's done. I think about the family. In 1929, the civil rights champion's voice was silenced. He died in his home at the age of 66. Mitchell is buried next to his mother in Evergreen Cemetery. More people are learning about John Mitchell, and I think that's a good thing. That's a very good thing. The child who was once enslaved blossomed into a fearless figure, the man who would one day rule the planet. You don't have to necessarily remember the person, but you need to remember the works. Over time, murals and tributes fade. But in John Mitchell Jr.'s case, nothing is more long-lasting as the path he paved. I learned a saying long ago, men plant seeds for trees that they'll never enjoy the shades of. John did that. You know, he left a legacy and a story, and his generations that, moving forward will continue to be building off that legacy. 